So let's quickly talk about primary ciliary dyskinesia. And when I say primary ciliary dyskinesia, it has ciliary in the name, so the cilia of the body are going to be affected. So let's talk about some of the basics. Cilia is used to move stuff around. Whether it's the cell itself, cilia can move a cell around, or it can be part of the cell to move other stuff. So cilia within your respiratory tract help move phlegm. They help beat phlegm up from the bottom of your lungs uh, more to the top so you can spit it out, so you can swallow it. Uh, it helps move phlegm. That's just one example of the many, many ways that uh, cilia are used within the body. So let's talk about the cilia primary ciliary dyskinesia. It's going to be an autosomal recessive disorder, meaning that you have to have a mutation in two alleles, not just one allele, but of the two alleles to have the disease. Um, if you have a normal functioning allele, then you will not. Uh, so what it is, is it's going to be a mutation somewhere within the cilia. The cilia uh, have dynean arms, they've got spo radial spokes, they've got a central apparatus. Uh, any defect that causes ciliary dysfunction is going to cause this primary ciliary dyskinesia. So uh, let's talk about what happens. Cilia is used in your body uh, everywhere, and that includes during embryologic development. And we'll see a disorder called Cardinger syndrome uh, that is going to result as of a primary ciliary dyskinesia. So let's let's go ahead and move on here. So during embryologic development, you're going to need cilia, and that's going to help determine uh, organ orientation. Your organs depend on cilia to find out where they ultimately end. And when you have a disorder of the cilia, you're going to get the Cardinger syndrome. And that's going to result uh, due to a dynean arm defect specifically. I said that earlier, there's all these different spoke, radial spokes, central apparatus, dynean arms. It's going to be the dynean arm that's going to cause the Cardinger syndrome. So now let's take a look. The first four bullet points here are going to be the main points of Cardinger syndrome. Uh, the main symptom that should tip you off is going to be situ inversus. And that's going to be a reversal of your organs within your body. Remember I said during embryogenesis that your, that your organs depend on cilia for their orientation. However, if you have immodal cilia, meaning your cilia don't work and don't beat and it can't move the fluid around. Uh, and orient your cells so your organs will still develop. However, it'll be situ inversus. Instead of your liver being on the right side, it'll be on the left side. Instead of your spleen being on the left side, it'll be on the right side. All of your organs are flipped around. So imagine a sagittal plane split through your body. Uh, it will inverse around that sagittal plane. So on x-ray, don't be surprised when your heart is located on your right side instead of your left side. That'll be an example of situ inversus. Also, you've got fallopian tube and sperm dysfunction. The fallopian tubes, uh, right where they, the fallopian tubes attach to the ovary, they've got fimbriae. They've got uh, kind of these modified cilia that form a rhythmic beating pattern, which kind of uh, directs the egg that gets released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. It's beating. It's forming a kind of like wave-like motion to, to invite the egg into the fallopian tube. However, if we have a ciliary dysfunction, this beating pattern cannot occur. And then also, you've got sperm dysfunction. The sperm require a flagella, uh, which is just a modified cilia. When you have uh, primary ciliary dyskinesia, you cannot uh, have modal sperm. So you get infertility as a result. So Cardinger syndrome, we've already hit two of those bullet points. Let's go on to sinusitis. Sinusitis is gonna be an infection of your sinuses. And why, do, why does this occur? Well, in your respiratory tract, in your mucosal membranes, you've got cilia. And it's thought that you get sinusitis because you have an inability to keep this mucus moving. And you're unable to move the bacteria and beat the bacteria out of your sinuses. So you get this buildup of, uh, of mucus, you get um, infections, you get bacteria in that mucus, and when it sits there, when it's not able to move, 
when it sits in your sinuses, you'll get an infection. And so you get recurrent sinusitis, and that's going to be a main key. But also you've got bronchiectasis, and then also uh, pneumonia and otitis media when you have ciliary problems. The pneumonia, I'd like to point out, is just due to uh, the inability, like I said, you have cilia in your respiratory system that beats phlegm up the respiratory system, up your trachea, uh, you're able to swallow it then or spit it out. Um, if you don't do that, so let's say, let's say smokers. Smokers, smoke has a lot of toxins and those toxins will affect the cells of your respiratory tract that have cilia. So when you have a smoker's cough, it's because that smoke, the carcinogens within the smoke are affecting these ciliary cells, causing the cilia to not work you're not able to beat up the phlegm, so you get kind of like a hacky, kind of phlegm-filled smoker's cough. But that's not primary. Primary ciliary dyskinesia is a primary dysfunction of the cell itself. It's not caused by secondary means like smoke. It's caused by the cilia itself within the cell having a dysfunction. However, they still get pneumonia because you're not able to beat it up, kind of like smokers who get pneumonia because they don't have cilia that works. So there's a little clinical tie-in. And then finally, you've got otitis media. So you've got uh, ear infections as a recurrence. So Cartinger syndrome, you're going to see the, the immodal cilia. You'll see the, the uh, infertility. You'll see bronchiectasis, recurrent sinusitis, and then also the main kind of I would start, if, if I was studying for a test, the situ inversus. Um, all this material was gathered uh, through my medical education and filled in with Wikipedia information. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Any comments, likes, or subscribe. Thank you very much.